Hi, I'm Headley. And I'm Paul. And between the two of us, we love talking about... Well, Wessex. And sometimes we might step out of that border of Wessex and creep into Mercia or even further north. Whether it's ancient trackways, stone bothering... Or abandoned canals, railways, Roman roads. Well, isn't this just your YouTube channel? Um, maybe, but, you know, I like to waffle a little bit. And the YouTube algorithm doesn't always allow us to um, waffle to the full extent. So maybe this is, for me personally, an outlet to waffle a bit more. Maybe for you two here as well, Headley. So this is our pilot podcast. So what are we going to talk about? I've got a few things that we could talk about, but maybe before then we should just talk about the podcast and why we're here. Yeah. So this is this is pilot. Where this is almost a tester for us as, as much as it is for everybody else, I guess. So what do we like doing? Well, you may or may not have seen my YouTube channel. And if you have, you may have seen Headley and some of the things that we, we, we enjoy cross over quite a bit but perhaps also not completely. So we've got a little bit of a mix to offer our, our audience. Yes, we, we, we do cross over. I think as far as followers are concerned, you're kind of up there in the gods with billions and billions <laughs> of followers, whereas I've kind of got, you know, three in Oxfordshire, three in Wiltshire, uh, a goat and my sister, and she's only there out of sympathy anyway. Let's face it. So, um, but yeah, no, it's it's it's. I think it's a really good idea, and uh, you know, I, I've been on some of your uh, behind the scenes, and in fact, behind the camera on a couple of occasions on a couple of your uh, videos so far, and it's it's great to see how it is done behind the scenes. Um, it's great fun, and obviously, you've been doing this for years, haven't you? Yeah, and I, and I think really for me, that's what this podcast is going to help me do personally is give more context to some of those videos that you've seen and you know there, there's there's topics which I could waffle for hours on obviously we won't do that but we could <laughs> waffle for quite a considerable time but of course the YouTube algorithm means you've got to cut things down by the skin of your teeth and you've got to snappy quick punchy videos and mm. um, yeah some of the topics that we cover don't really you know, they, they, they want more than that. You need a bit more time to really talk something through. In fact, a topic that we'll come to perhaps later in this podcast is just one of those topics. Mm. Um, yeah, it's something I've wanted to quiz you on for a while. And I think later on we will come on to that. I mean, if it's in the title at all, people will know about what we're aiming towards there anyway. But very uh, good point. Yeah. So you're you're um, yeah, and you do like to be called a YouTuber or are you a video maker, filmmaker? That's that's a that's such a good question, Eddie. Such a good question because when people say what do what do you what are you do or what are you doing if I see you with a camera, the last thing you want to say you'll know this because Eddie, you do a lot of drone piloting for various different reasons, mm. and if mainly money. But the, the 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 perception that comes with a drone pilot, I kind of think is similar sometimes to a YouTuber. It's oh you're flying a drone. Um, mm. And oh, you're a YouTuber. It's it doesn't come sometimes with a, the respect it almost deserves, and I, that, that's making me sound like oh, look at me, I'm a YouTuber. Um, does that make sense? What, it does. And um, what I find one of the similarities <clears throat> is that when you're, for example, I've noticed when you're doing it, you're making a video and you've got the end result in your mind. You know what you're aiming towards. You know what you want to convey. And whilst you're doing that, things are happening around you. There are people walking past. There's you might have a dog run up to you, or s something makes a noise in the background. But you're you kind of you you build a tunnel through that, and you just get to what you're actually aiming for. And it's the same being a drone pilot. You kind of, if you're a photographer or filmmaker using a drone, you've got in mind the scene or the picture that you want to get, the composition yeah. you want. And, you know, people are looking at you flying a drone. Uh, there are things happening around you and you've always got to think about the point of view of your audience through all of that. And that's that's the thing, you know, when you're making your videos, you kind of it's not getting into character, but it's getting into presenting the way you your your followers are used to you presenting. And you kind of have to snap yeah. between being you and being you. Sort yes. of thing. And it's the same being a drone pilot. 
Yeah, no, I yeah. completely understand. I, I think what I try and say sometimes, if I'm being a bit more technical, is I make films and I put them on YouTube mm. rather yes. than I'm a YouTuber. Because a YouTuber's perception, if you ask the kids what a YouTuber is, the kids are going to say Mr. Beast and you know, all the all the sort of big YouTubers have got millions of followers, KSI mm. and all that, and, and they make great films. But I'd rather hope that I make a good quality film that maybe one day you'd see on a, t a TV, that kind of I aim for that production, don't always get it, mm. and put it on YouTube. Um, yeah, and I think another yeah. thing that kind of uh, binds what we do a little bit is we're trying to take people to interesting places to see interesting things. A lot of people can't get to these places. A lot of people, um, for example, a family member of mine who's getting on a bit, hopefully they don't watch this, um, <laughs> they can't get to the Ridgeway, they can't get to the Wayfarer's Way, they can't get to the places in Wiltshire that uh, they can see just on the screen, you know, in for me, from picture form and from you, you know, these glorious videos. And what I like is you have a topic that people, some of the topics you cover are stuff that I kind of wonder about, you know, um, yeah. like what is the centre of a landmass and these, uh, these uh, islands of, you know, these uh, public access areas, but how do you get to them? That sort of yep. stuff. And you have them. And of course you can, with your finished video, it's flitting between live examples um, in different places, you know, and people don't see everything in between. They don't see all the traveling, the planning and the setting up of shops and everything. Yeah. What they have yeah. is it just there on a plate in front of them uh, for free as well. And uh, yeah. that's, that's the great thing about it. And, you know, it makes me worry a little bit about where Elon Musk is going to be taking Twitter, but uh, <laughs> Indeed, it's, yes. uh, it's early days on that anyway. It is early days. So, so really from our, our point of view, this podcast is going to be, well, it's, in, it's titled Wessex Ways because that's the, the broader area we live in. And it's going to be a, a sort of our shared interests. I guess that was a, is a good summary. It's going to be the behind the scenes from my YouTube. And it's going to be um, obviously 50% of your interest too, Headley. So maybe yeah. I can ask you, you know, to tell our listeners and viewers, if they're watching on YouTube, what's your, um, what's your, your, your love your your main um interest should we say well okay so <clears throat> i for for a living i have a job at the moment that's uh, a little bit stressful and i won't go into any details on that because people will fall asleep and turn off at this early <laughs> stage but um to to get around the kind of the stress and the hours that i do i like anything to do with the wessex countryside so to define wessex it's an ancient kingdom you know people might have seen it you know documentaries and if they watch for example um bernard cornwell's the last kingdom yeah um they the will know that i'm in season five right now are you no oh, i could so spoil this for you yeah. i could so spoil this for you <laughs> but um yeah so uh basically wessex was the south and west of what is now england um i i think you and i both live in what would have been wessex in this this kingdom um and i think i'm close to the the east northeast border with mercia so somewhere up near dorchester and berensfield i think was uh where the the border to mercia would have been and i would have been just inside of wessex and of course wessex was ruled by uh a lot of um kings that we know of like alfred the great and we had battles around here as well. So 871, we had Battle of Ashdown, uh, potentially quite near to here. Uh, but Wessex is a, is a huge area and it gives us quite a lot of scope. So we, I know that, for example, you're, you're good at um, explaining uh, things relating to maybe the industrial side of things, the transport side of things like canals and railways. And yep. I know a fair bit about things like paths like the Ridgeway and... Um, basically what things look like from above as well um so i think that's that's the thing isn't it we're, we're looking for you know to talk about things that are relating to wessex the people there the culture the art the history uh the countryside uh transportation um and that that will lead us into uh shortly um something i wanted to discuss with you from one of your videos which is the thames as well oh yes 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 the isis is it the isis that hates well <laughs> Where I am, it's it's meant to be the the Isis or Isis, um, but I think since uh, events in recent history, people have been calling it Isis a little bit less. Uh, yep. But officially, I think it's the Isis from 
somewhere in Oxford, I think it's the bridge, going down to, well, uh, Whitlam Clumps, where the River Tame joins, joins the River Thames. Oh, okay. Uh, absolutely beautiful area, nicest part of the Thames, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but one thing I was going to say is, before we, we come on to the Thames anyway, properly, uh, one thing we were looking at doing in these podcasts was to talk a little bit about what we've been up to recently. Um, I know that's uh, a popular feature of other podcasts that we listen to. So yeah, I was going to ask you what what you've been up to in the last sort of two, three weeks. Oh, goodness me. Do you you know what I need to do? I need to like check my, um, check my phone in terms Mm. of the pictures, because every time I go out and I I make a video, I also take a whole bunch of pictures and that it's funny how that almost becomes like a timeline for my life. Is yeah. if I look at my phone in the yeah. gallery, I'm like, oh yeah, I did that last week. Or if I, if I'm, well, you're if, hardly ever in, aren't, aren't you? Because you're always out making these videos, and I've seen the travelling involved now. So, uh, uh, do, do you know, it, there's a lot of travelling involved. Yes, definitely. No. Um, but we we try and tell a story, so we don't always need to travel to the area. And a great example is is, is what I've been doing today. Just. Uh, fascinating subject that popped into my um net of interests um which as, as if you've seen the youtube channel you'll know it's uh, old abandoned railways abandoned canals old routes as with with headley's love too and today i've been looking at a not specifically a roman road but a roman route so mm. a man called ivan uh, mcgarry he made all the numbers for the Roman road routes, but back in the Roman times, they had what they called itineraries, and the itineraries were routes. So if you wanted to get from Silchester to London, or, and I'll use the current modern names because I won't embarrass myself by trying to pronounce any kind of Latin or Roman, if you wanted to get to Silchester to Exeter, you'd look at one of these lists, which is the itineraries, and it would tell you how to get there by the next town and the next town and the next town and it would give you the mileage between but the issue with with Britain is there's only 15 lists so there's only 15 routes which covers only 25% of the Roman roads in this country but anyway all that aside route uh, or no list 15 XV mm. lists the route between Silchester to Exeter so if you wanted to get there you'd have to go through uh, Winchester, Serum, um, Dorchester, blah, blah, blah. And it listed how to get there. It's wonderful. But it was smudged. Mm. And there's, there's there's some errors and there's some mistakes. And then the second town on there is um, Vindiomis or Vindemus or Vindemius or Vindemum. And the beauty is no one knows where it was. So it is still... A Roman town that did exist that nobody knows the location to. So I thought to myself, I'll go and find it. So that's what we're doing today. <laughs> Do you, you know, that is, it's funny, you were talking about, um, you know, a historic Roman map of the country and everything and how uh, towns or kind of nodes, you know, you'd have the direction, as you say, go here, then go here, then go here to get here. Yeah. And then modern day, obviously, you've got the atlas with the roads. Um but there's another hidden uh, atlas of Britain as well that uses exactly the same formula that you're talking about. And that's the aeronautical atlas. Oh. So instead of towns, you've got what's called a VOR beacons. And there's some fantastic names. Um, uh, you know, we've, I've got one at Heathrow as well, but every yep. VOR beacon is effectively a town in the sky. Yeah. So they don't navigate using towns on the ground, but they use those. And the, the way they do directions is almost exactly the same. It's travel such and such west or so many co- you know, so many coordinates of the degrees of the compass. Yeah. And yeah. then turn this way to this one, then that one. And then eventually you get from the Atlantic over Ireland into Heathrow and stuff like that. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny how the methodology that the Romans used is yeah. still in use to this day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, now imagine if between your VOR beacons hmm. to get from Silchester to Winchester in hmm. a straight line is 22 hmm. miles, roughly. Yeah. Now there's a slight difference between the mileage that we use today and the mileage the Roman used, but it was only about, I think, uh, like 80 feet or 200 feet or whatever, small margin of error, so it doesn't matter. Hmm. So 22 miles 
from Silchester to Winchester. But in between those two places, there is this town, uh, Vindomis. But the mileage says 15 to Vindomis and 20 mm. or thereabouts to Winchester. So it's 35 miles. 35 miles. But that means it, it's not a straight line. It's there to there or or somewhere. So throughout sort of modern history, and from I'm talking from 1800s, antiquarians mm. have all said, oh, well, in that case, it must be the town must be over here or over here or over here. And they've all speculated at where this lost town was. But then, of course, some people come along and say, hang on, that could be an error. It could be an error in transcription. It could be a smudge because this list, Britain was at the back end of the list, the um, mm. itineraries of Emperor Antonius or whatever his name was. Um, Britain's lists, 15 lists, were at the end. So they were all a bit crumpled, smudged, transcribed wrong, mm. maybe. So is it that they were transcribed wrong? And this lost town is halfway on a straight line. Or is it that the mileage is correct? And the town is somewhere like Alton. Um, mm. Because there, there is a lost town there somewhere near Alton. But then the mileage the other way, doesn't it? So that's kind of what I'm trying to get across in a video mm. that I've been doing today. Um, and yeah, it's um, one of the many random things that pop into my head and go, right, I need to find this out. I really need to find this out. I never know where you get your ideas from. I know some of them are on Twitter because I see some of the conversations that you have had with other people on there. And that has sometimes sort of manifested into some kind of idea for a video. Then you then carry that through and, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, popular. Um, but I'm also wondering if maybe uh, we I think you mentioned it, have a section in this podcast where we have uh, listeners mysteries, maybe. If yeah, it's got sort of something interesting that's a bit mysterious or maybe slightly unexplained. It's something we could feed onto this podcast. And may maybe if you and I sitting here can't answer it because, you know, let's face it, we're not experts in anything. Um, it's something that maybe you can delve into using your power of video I, I, i'm all i'm all for i'm all for getting ideas off of people absolutely yeah. and yeah you're right that in terms of the source of material for our, our mm. youtube channel is mm. is anything and everything i've, I've got mm. um an app i use where i can just chuck ideas at it and just something pops into my head in the middle of the night i'll stick it on this app and then one day i'll research it or if i'm short on mm. ideas at the time i'll go to this app and find the ideas that i, I went back on but there's all there's a trillion sources. That idea I got um, that I just talked about was from a website called Saxon History, and I've been chatting mm. with a guy, a guy called Simon runs it, and he's mapped mm. all the Roman yeah. roads using Google Maps, mm. um, which is a great website. We'll, we'll link that somehow. I'm not sure how we link on a on a uh, podcast, but we will do that. Um, really good website, and I noticed he came up with a few of his own ideas, like we do or I do on the YouTube mm. channel. And he had Roman Road 155, which goes from Silchester to Chichester, as quite a zigzag. And I just, I just sat there for ages thinking, wonder why he's got that as a zigzag. And then, of course, it opened this can of worms. And a whole mm. load of ideas popped into my head. This lost town that's supposed to be on the way. Why is that route a zigzag? Why is there not a route between Alton and Winchester? So all of a sudden I had four ideas for four videos for YouTube. And of course, they're yeah. all Roman ones, so I won't put them out all at the same time because I don't want to do four Roman videos at the same time. But so were, yeah, so were they two thousand odd years ago? Were they naming roads in a similar fashion to how roads are named now, or or, or is it more like you know, like a New York system where you have a, an incremental one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? How, I don't do think you know they, how? Well, I don't think they numbered them. Uh, hmm. I'm almost positive. Uh, they so this is a modern day way of cataloguing the roads. Well, modern day ish. Um, Ivan McGarry was born in something like 1890 something, died in mm. 1967. Mm. He was the guy that came up with the current numbering system. Um, right. And he mapped it. He mapped as many as he could. Really kind of a humble guy. If he didn't know, he said, I don't know, which is great. But he mapped the whole country and he gave the numbers very similar to today's modern motorway system, for example, on road numbering system. So where mm. you've got the M3, you've got the A3 or the A3. So all mm. the roads kind of come off of that. And then you know, third tier roads have got A38 or A383 mm. or whatever. Well, Ivan McGarry did just that uh, with Roman roads. 
Um, so Roman Road number four goes between London down to Exeter. And then all the okay. subsidiary roads are A43 or A4A. or It's a, it's a simple and sort of good system. But um, with mm. the Rome, that's a good question. Would the Romans name them themselves? I don't know. They'd certainly have the milestones on the way and the milestones would often uh, give, well, they give the mileage. That sounds like an obvious mm. thing, but that's not always the case. Because as mm. time went on in the Roman period, they didn't always have the mileage on there. They just had the emperor of the time. Mm. Um, and that was it. It's, it was almost like a propaganda thing. Milestones became a propaganda thing as time went on in the Roman occupation. But mm. um, yeah, they certainly had the town name um, and the mileage. That was certainly on the itineraries, but no road name as such that I'm aware of. Mm. Yeah, sounds like they had an easier time getting around than I do nowadays using Google <laughs> I, Maps. And yeah, I, well, I saw some of your, your smart um, motorways. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I wonder if they had smart bridleways back then. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind yeah. of leads me into what I've been doing. Yes, the last that's the next weeks. question. Um, yeah. Um, so again, kind of related to roads in a way, but actually even older. So I have this kind of fascination as you know with the ridgeway uh ridgeway being um 87 miles long um from ivinghoe beacon uh or from or to depending on how you look at it ivinghoe beacon in the chilterns to overton hill near avebury um the age of the ridgeway well it probably used to be a series of um drovers routes uh and yeah. trade routes rather than a single here is the Ridgeway single route going the whole way. Uh, obviously, uh, I think it's 50 years ago, it was categorised as a national trail. And that's the, the Ridgeway, inverted commas, that we have nowadays. Um, but it used to deviate a little bit from where it does now. So, for example, at Barbary Castle, they got the Ridgeway going straight through the uh the hill fort at the moment which is spectacular looks great from above brings people in etc etc but in reality it used to take a slightly more boring route around the bottom of the the ridge and then across to Lidington castle uh past swindon um yep. so not to say swindon's <laughs> disinteresting in any way it's certainly not uh, <laughs> other podcasts may dwell on that but we don't um but <laughs> Uh, the last, um, my my love of the Ridgeway over the last two weeks has drawn me towards a similar route called the Wayfarers Walk. Now, this is not quite as well known. Um, so I've been looking uh, a little bit at the Wikipedia sites for this because, of course, we all thoroughly trust Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit shorter. It's 71 miles long, uh, unlike the Ridgeway, which is 87. Um, it crosses arguably, and this could be a subject, Arguably yep. the highest hill, the highest natural land point um, in the southeast of England. And it, again, depends where you draw the, the line there. A lot of people would not class Warbury Hill as the uh, is in southeast England. But certainly it's a very high point, very spectacular. 974 feet above sea level. So not yep. that high in the grand scale of things, but, you know, it is spectacular. Um, it's basically the, the, the Wayfarers... Walk um, is it's it's described as an ancient route which might have been used by drovers for taking cattle to export. So okay. it hasn't quite got the uh, the the twang of the description of the Ridgeway, which is probably why you don't see so many people on it. Ridgeway yep. being blatantly labelled as the oldest road in the UK or maybe yep. Europe um, tends to draw a few more people. Um, and what Wikipedia explains uh, for the Wayfarers Walk, this is kind of what drew me there. It says the footpath can be walked in either direction, which <laughs> useful is that it makes me wonder, is that a unique attribute? Is yeah. that, you know, do, do one yeah. way footpaths exist? Is this, I mean, the, is this the ridgeway, enforced you, in any way? Yeah. You, know, it's, you know, you can only do the ridgeway north to south, right? You can't go backwards. Yeah, so. exactly. So um, I defiantly uh, have walked it in both directions. Um, I'm yet to get picked up on that, luckily. Uh, in fact, I uploaded a video today. I had a, uh, my second walk along Wayfarer's Walk yesterday, so I tackled the section between um, it was Watership Down and White Hill in Hampshire and Beacon Hill, Side Down, uh, Ladle Hill. Um, yep. Lovely, stunning, stunning, stunning area um, when it's not raining. 
and I had beautiful sunshine followed by the, the bowels of hell and I was on top of uh, Ladle Hill and from absolutely nowhere this humongous thunderstorm came across yeah. and I was by far the highest point around and there's lightning <laughs> flashing around me and I was hail, horizontal hail and it was freezing and then as quick as it came it went and I sent the drone up and got some sunshine shots so what on earth happened there I don't know but I caught it all on camera vaguely yeah. and I'm just uploading that to YouTube at the moment and the other section I'm fascinated with and I walked was I've got to get this right. Um, it was Pilot Hill uh, across to Warbury Hill. Again, spectacular. Uh, Gallows Down, which is uh, where Coombe Gibbet is, where they hung a couple yep. for being a bit naughty outside of marriage. Um, and then across to Inkpen, Inkpen Hill, Ham Hill, and down to River Hill. Uh, again, that bit's going down because it crosses three counties there. You've got Berkshire, yeah. Hampshire, Wiltshire, because there's a bit of... I think it's a bit of Berkshire that kind of sticks up between yep. Hampshire and Wiltshire. I think I might be wrong on that. But anyway, I was hugely confused at the time. It's only afterwards I looked it all up. But again, the views have been absolutely spectacular. Um, so Wayfarers yeah. Walk takes that in, in terms of Coombe Gibbet. Coombe Gibbet, mm. is that? Yeah. Because that's where it, test, it, the test way starts there, I think. Well, this it? is the thing. Uh, so not only did I not know which county I was in at any time, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know which any route I was on either um so I think Coombe Gibbet or Gallows Down however you like to call it is where both routes start so uh, okay you have it's very confusing so going off to the east along the ridge of the hill so it's easy to follow yeah is the Wayfarer's Walk yeah and then going off to the west initially yeah. you have the Test Way but then that bends 90 degrees towards the south yeah, and goes down and then follows the river test. Again, I've, I've got to do that. That looks amazing. And then the bit that goes off to the west, I I didn't know because on a map it's still marked as the Wayfarer's Walk. But then I saw a sign there saying it was the Wiltshire Way. So <laughs> okay, I'll be honest with you, I give up. You know, I give up. Um, no, I give up. Right, it's, what, it's one to it look is, at. It's beautiful. It? It's one to it look is. at. I wonder, I wonder why it's called the Wayfarers as well, because it's a Wayfarers. Is that not. Again, I know nothing about um, flora, fauna, anything like that at all. But is the Wayfarers not a. Um, like a shrub, a bush kind of system? And it indicates a very, very old pathway. If it, you have it, a Wayfarers on the side of your trackway, that means it, it, it's an indication it's extremely old. By all accounts, yeah. And I'm, again, I'm I'm just looking at the Wikipedia page now because this is this is how I roll. To be honest with you, um, <laughs> and it it has no, it has nothing about that at all. Th this is this is one of the key differences between the Wayfarers Walk and the Ridgeway. I mean, if you saw a picture of them side by side, they're both spectacular. I mean, okay, there are bits of the Ridgeway that blow everything away. You know, a bit around Uffington, for example, or coming down into Avery, but. Side by side, they're very, very similar. They're kind of a similar width in places. They go along the top of the hills, along the, the scarp of the hills. Yeah. Um, and the Ridgeway, there's no end of information. I mean, the Ridgeway's yeah. got its own group that looks after it. Um, wow. With uh, Sarah Wright, the Ridgeway officer, friend of mine, very, very nice. And she has a, a big job on her hands and so many people use it. And yet the Wayfarers walk, I don't know, I don't know, I yeah, I can't even see a group. I'm, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure people will, but it's um, it's equally as beautiful. Um, and yeah, there's, there's not a whole load of information on it, to be honest with you. Well, and that's part of the reason I'm going there. Yeah, that sounds great. And this is where perhaps some of our, our listeners or viewers, if you're watching on YouTube, mm. can contribute and they can put stuff in the link below because that's always quite useful. And the beauty, again, of this podcast is without talking about the podcast, but this beauty of the podcast is that when people do mention things and, and we've got time to then mention it and we can sort of go back on old snippets of information because, you know, again, with a YouTube channel, someone, a great example without waffling too much, we did a video on Tring, the other day, the Tring cuttings, mm. some of the biggest cuttings that were ever made in the uh, country, the canal mm. and the railway, straight long cuttings for like, four kilometers or whatever and we found that they were linked by a tunnel because when they were they were draining the railway cutting they drained it back into the canal 
long story, but we found two shafts. And we're like, oh my goodness me, this is great. We found the shafts for the tunnel. Brilliant. Problem solved. Off we went. Video posted, video uploaded, done. And then someone said on uh, as a comment below, um, there's a third shaft. And I'm like, where? It's the wrong side of the railway. So there's this tunnel between the railway and the canal, railway canal, two shafts. But then someone said, well, there's, there's a shaft over here. So all of a sudden, the whole video in my head is like, oh, well, I need to I need to address this. But I can't because the video is long gone. But mm. this podcast allows us to be able to do that and go, right, OK, well, let's have a look at that shaft and find out exactly why it's there. Metaphorically, if that makes sense. So, so you, that's right. You, you had <clears throat> so that the whole reason for this is that the the railway cutting was lower than the level of the canal. And so there was water coming into it and it had to be pumped back. Yes, pretty much. So mm. the canal came first and that was yeah. fed by a number of springs, including a particular spring. Um, all good. Loads of water. Fantastic. The mm. railway came along and, as you say, was probably a tiny bit lower than the canal. And all of a sudden, the spring water that was in between them went into the railway cutting. The canal suffered loss of water. The railway had mm. loads of water, didn't want water. So they just bore a tunnel between the two and mm. managed to somehow pump the water between the two, but it, or, or just let it flow between the two. Mm. Job done. Great stuff. Everyone's happy. The canal's got water. The railway hasn't got water. Brilliant. And we found two shafts on the exact alignment. So we thought, well, they must be construction shafts. You don't need a ventilation shaft, but construction shafts for the tunnel. But then someone said, over here, on the same alignment, over here, the wrong side of the railway is another shaft in line with the tunnel. So why would there be a shaft on that side of the railway? And I, I can't address that because, like I said, the video has gone. It's YouTube. You can't make another video about it because it wouldn't get many views because you've already done it. Um, but the beauty of hopefully of this podcast is we can talk about that and subjects that we talk about, like the Wayfarers Walk. Mm. In three weeks time, someone may have had a really good comment and said what it was all about. And we can we can sort of go back and address that. And I love that notion of being able to yeah. take our time over a subject. And I think that's that's important, too. I mean, it is it's sort of stressing that we're, we're not experts. We're kind of new to these subjects when oh, we yes. come across them. We're just bringing them to people's view, so to speak. Or, or you are mainly with the, the videos. I just take pretty pictures of hills from above. Um but you know and and when because I, I did a couple of videos with you i think one people probably might not know that i was on it i might have had a quick cameo but i was actually behind the camera i really enjoyed that people will notice that for a change instead of you holding a camera you're walking along hands free and uh, i'm yep. going to see how many people pick up on that um <laughs> but, <be> a few. <laughs> yeah but um yeah and and i think this is a good forum and and you know it's it's not a case of if you see someone on YouTube or on a podcast like this, say something that's maybe not accurate. Um, you know, I'm, I'm prone to it a lot myself. Um, it's, it's not something I take offense at if someone corrects me for me, it's wanting to learn about these things, learn what I don't already know and everything and, and bring that to people's attention. And, you know, if, if there is a big correction to be made, we can use the next podcast just to mention that as well. Um, but, uh, can I come on to one of your videos? The one that, that... I mean, the, the, the danger is, Eddie, we've been waffling for quite some time. So I think we need to get to the, the core subject. Is that what you're going to say? Or am I, yes, am I, yes, am yes. I getting ahead of myself? No, I'm, I can see the time ticking away. I've been overly enthusiastic, to be honest with you. But, uh, so, you know, that's the way it is. So we, we can probably cover this quite quickly. But the video that I saw that you did, which I think was the first one I ever saw of yours okay. because I went to visit Thames Head and I basically started googling uh, the source of the Thames and everything yeah and and basically your, your video says something like this so the River Severn is the longest river officially in the UK at 219 miles the River Thames you know um, goes through London very grand uh, is 214 miles so it's a few miles shorter um, but there's also a little river called the River Churn now, the churn drains into the Thames at Cricklade. It's Letchlade or Cricklade. I think it's Cricklade. Yeah, and Cricklade. The churn, yeah, and so the churn is 14 miles long. So if you consider the source of the churn 
to be the source of the Thames instead, then that adds 14 miles, or rather it churns more than 14 miles, but it would add 14 miles to the overall length of the Thames to bring it up to 228 and longest river in the UK. Now, the, the definition that you said of a the source of a river is is basically the water source that drains into the river that's the furthest from where it empties into the sea, into the estuary, which would make um, Seven Springs, I think it is, the, the source of the churn, also the source of the Thames. But because of, um, in 1542, you said John Leland um, basically declared Thames oh, Head, yeah. which to me was a pile of stone in the middle of a field. Um, didn't feel very grand, didn't feel like the start of the Thames to me, um, you know, because he declared that as the source of the Thames, it's been that way ever since. There'll be a lot of red te- tape unnecessarily to fix that. But to me, this is kind of a, a false knighthood. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, you know, I've been to Seven Springs, I've been to Thames Head and, you know, the, the River Chun, it comes out of the ground. It's quite, you know, dramatic as it comes out. It's a proper spring. Yep. Uh, it's got, you know, a lot of markings around it. And then it goes down through beautiful valleys and it, it meanders, um, a absolutely gorgeous river. And then it, it joins the traditional Thames, which I think incidentally is smaller than the Churn at where it meets, which again, to me, points, you know, Seven Springs as being the, the source of the Thames. But I, I understand you probably may not hold an opinion on that because of the neutrality of your video and everything but i'm i'm not holding back on this when i i think seven springs is the source of the thames um and i think yeah it's a, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it goes yeah, through good. wessex it's a beautiful river and I, I think it deserves a beautiful source I, you yeah. know it's funny we, yeah yeah it's funny how things stick isn't it it's funny how things stick for such a long time for 500 mm. years um, this dude called Leland, I can't remember. Was it? I, do you know what? I haven't watched a video mm. in about a year, so. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, this guy, he was after the attention of the king, and he wanted to describe the country, and he wanted to mm. tell all these stories and give them to the king at the time, probably mm. Henry the Eighth or something. Um, I'm terrible at kings and queens, and yeah, he went around. And he said, "Oh, this is this. It's beautiful. This is here. It's beautiful. This is the source of the Thames, and it's beautiful, etc." And yeah, that was um, Thames Head. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, stick another. Um, well, as you rightly said, the definition of the source of a river is the furthest tributary away from, or the furthest tributary which makes it the longest, mm. whatever. Yeah, so the furthest between the estuary and the yeah. the source, the tributary. Yeah. 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 yeah, and clearly, yeah. Un- unequivocally, that is the River Churn. There's mm. no question. It's not even up for debate. It's that that's the furthest away by, mm. as you mm. said, quite some distance, at least another ten miles on top of the the overall length. Um, mm. And it is beautiful. It is beautiful. It's a proper spring. It's mm. got. It's been obviously built up around the sides, but that even adds to it because all of a sudden you've got yeah. water coming from different directions. Um, and yeah, viewers, you should go and see. Um, what's it called? Seven Sisters. Se- Seven Springs, I think. Seven it's, Springs. It's... I, I think it's near Cheltenham somewhere. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's certainly on the way, kind isn't of a, it? a lay-by that you can park in and it comes out of a wall and everything. And it's got a... I, I, I know from going there and I know from your video, it's, I can't remember what it is. There's a little plaque there that yes. sort of alludes to it being potentially connected with the Thames. It doesn't yeah. claim to be the source of the Thames, but um, to me, it, it's got that moral. Oh, ye source of Thames or something like that. Or, or, or this, uh, yeah, the true source of the Thames, I think it says. Mm. It's fascinating as well because I think in that video we mentioned the Thames and Seven Canal. Yes. Where Sampton yes. Tunnel is. Mm. And I think, um, so again, when we went to the, the source of the Thames by, by um, Thames Head, there was no mm. water. Mm. It's nothing. It's just an empty fields and people say it's largely empty um, all year round. But apparently when it is extremely heavy rain and it has been for a long period of time, mm. then the source, that source of the Thames, the water goes even further back and it comes mm. out of the canal. It comes from the Sapperton Tunnel. So even that source that they've, you know, the official source of the Thames it might not even be right in its own self because it appears to come further back. But um, mm. yeah. it, it's a fascinating topic, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. It is. I love it, it is. We, we, well, there's not enough time. To discuss this fully, I don't think there ever will be. 
Uh, but it's just something that I've I've been fascinated with for a while. But yeah, yeah. yeah. And it also it also leads me on to things like catchment areas and um, I never I always uh, watersheds. Watersheds is mm. the word I'm looking for, mm. and how watersheds interact with each other. I think we've done a couple of videos on that as well. I think there's a place mm. in going off topic. Place in Chard by all accounts and again we've done a video on this where you can stand in the middle of the road if you're brave enough and you can hold a glass of water in each hand yeah. you stand in the middle of the road tip a glass of the water you can't see my arms now because of the weird thing we've got on this this um picture i can't see that <laughs> you can you can tip a glass of water out of your right hand out of your left hand and they go one of them goes up north to uh, the bristol channel and the other goes south to the english channel the Solent. Mm. Um, stood on the same street and I love that notion of watersheds and, and yeah. where watersheds are and where water goes if it goes in that way in that direction and the, the, the potentially infinitesimally small mm. watershed that there is if you drop a water there drop a water there and they go in different direction but, you did yeah. a video on that and I think you found a, a spot near round way down in Wiltshire didn't you that it went three different ways yes uh, oh, and th that caused all kinds of comments because my my theory was is there a spot in the UK or mainland UK where the water goes to three different bodies of water so I class three different bodies of water as south for the Solent east uh, for the North Sea Thames uh, west for the Bristol Channel out to the um, Atlantic or whatever Mm. and yeah there were a number of people that said oh there well three different directions could be here and three different directions could be there but um yeah i maintain that the uh, the round is it round away round, round way down yeah round way down yeah there is a spot there somewhere where uh, tipping a glass of water on the one spot could potentially go in three different directions and three different yeah. bodies of water um yeah, yeah. and tim door agrees with me <laughs> oh tim door agrees with you i mean he's built his own <laughs> long barrow and everything he's he knows yeah. his stuff i'm not going to argue with tim and uh it's nothing to do with the fact that he lives near it at all so no fantastic <laughs> <laughs> we love you tim really okay well i think we've we've gone over the 40 minutes haven't we uh that we've yeah I, I think so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, so the other thing been... we were going to add on at the end mm. i think we were, mm. we were going to do news at the start main bit yeah. in the middle and we as i think you've already alluded to headley is um listeners ideas listeners mysteries mm. listeners things things that you want us to talk about not just what me and Headley have been up to but what what random quirks in the landscape um have you seen what do you want to know mm. what something is do you want to know what mystery or the mysteries to be solved and again me and Headley aren't experts we just love to sort of investigate these things ourselves so have you got mm. something interesting and quirky that we should be talking about we should be looking at yeah and um, yeah as this is our third po first podcast, Eddie, I don't think we've got any, have we? No, um, I'm looking now <laughs> and uh, we have no listeners and no comments, but then we're not live. So I'm guessing <laughs> that's something to do with it. You, you never know. In years to come, people might look back on this and go, how tacky was that? Uh, but uh, yeah, hey. here we are. <laughs> first shot at anything, right? Well, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So I'd, I'd say people... Um, not trying to get followers here, but we like to engage with people on Twitter at the moment, depending on what Elon Musk has got planned for it. Uh, that's yep. where I basically interact most with people. Um, I've got a YouTube channel, but I'm, it's not big or anything like that. Uh, his channel, I don't know which side you're on, that side. Yeah, his channel is, is definitely worth subscribing to. I, I wouldn't subscribe to mine in the, until I actually get things sorted out on there properly. But, well, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's a, so people can find you uh, on Twitter and Instagram. Yes, I and guess Instagram. We can, I can put the links. I can put the links on the yes. picture. But I, for the for people listening, um, what is your handle? At Headley uh, Thorn? Or I think, we... right, I've got to get this right. So Twitter, the easiest way to find me is just search Headley Thorn. And that's, you yep. see it's spelt down here. It's a ridiculous name. It's the 70s. My parents were on drugs. Um <laughs> <laughs> and for Instagram, I know it's Headley underscore Thorn. Perfect. So, um, yeah. I'm on Instagram and Twitter as Paul Whitewick. But of course, as Headley said, you can also follow us on uh, Twitter under Wessex Ways as a handle. We'll probably both look after that account when we head in, just yeah, post some random so. pictures from time to time, remember? So. And of course, if you're listening on the podcast format, we're also going to put these videos on YouTube. Again, search up Wessex Ways because this will appear as a YouTube video. And we're also going to put um, our ugly mugs 
on it too at some point. Um, I speak for us both, Headley, um, along with some pictures and maybe some video footage just to give you something in the background. And I'm just up. trusting you because I That's fine. I got no editing control on this at all. So I'll pro- we'll probably end up in some Roman amphitheatre or you'll dress me up as something I don't know. But, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll keep it like that. So uh, I'll, I'll just listen to the uh, the audio version. So, yeah. Cool. Thanks okay. Well, me. yeah. Thanks for listening, people, uh, and and do all the things you should do: share and like, and all of those wonderful share, things. Like, subscribe, yeah, etc. And yeah, yeah, get involved well, with the discussion. That's the main yes, thing, I think, isn't it? Definitely. The more mysteries we get, the more stories we can pursue. Indeed. Right. Yeah. Take care. Uh, thanks for listening from me, Paul, and Headley. Me, Headley. Yes. Thank you. Bye bye.